Hi, welcome to another informative video brought to you by Doomsday Diesel. In this video, I'll be going over the painting process on my cut V frame that I'm doing as part of a frame off restoration for a 1986 square body cut V. And the main focus of this video is going to be the POR 15 and all the technical stuff that you want to know that they don't have or that they have discrepancies on in their instructions. But I'll also be going over top coating it with a primer and a single stage urethane. I'm going to go over everything in excruciating detail because some of these products, especially the POR 15, are really expensive. And I wanted to learn everything I could before I made that investment. So if you're like me and you want to know everything you can about something before you buy it, then just sit back and watch and I'll try to explain all of it for you as best I can. So here behind me you can see the frame's already been painted. I actually went ahead and had this frame sandblasted for a couple of reasons. I've never sandblasted anything before and I wanted to just try it to see how it was. It made it a lot easier to weld because I didn't have all those impurities giving me porosity. I was able to very easily detect any cracks in the frame, which I did find one. It was hidden pretty well, but you could see all the grinding marks, actually, after it was sandblasted. And so I got that repaired. And it was also just a thing I wanted to try for paint adhesion, because from everything I've read, a sandblasted surface is the best surface to get, some, uh, to get paint to stick. Otherwise, you're relying on getting it clean enough and etching the, the metal. If you have a smooth surface, you have to etch it chemically to give it enough tooth, as they call it, for the paint to bite into. And I want this to last me forever because this is going to be my daily driver when I complete it. And I live on gravel roads, and gravel roads basically sandblast everything. They blast your paint off. They, it's like rubbing sandpaper across your tires. It's just really hard on everything and every every place that uh, gravel chips the paint away is a spot for rust to start forming and POR 15 claims that they have a very high impact resistance um, with their, their POR 15 rust preventative paint so that was why I went with it because I want to absolutely rust proof it and ideally have as much gravel impact resistance as I can get. So here you can actually see some of the POR15 bleeding through those little silver specks. The texture of the paint is really rough. Um, I actually used a snap-on HVLP gun it's like a $280 gun. You'd think that would be um, high quality, but it's it's actually a, I don't know, this, this seems kind of like a cheap generic gun. So I'm back, back to searching for a better gun. I got the gun um, through the Snap-on college student tool purchase program. So I got it, I got it really cheap. I got it for like 60% off. But still, uh, you'd think snap-on would mean best of the best and certainly doesn't seem to be the case. So it really kind of just splattered the paint. Um, you can kind of see that thick, thick texture-like coating, which I really don't mind on this frame. But I'm getting ready to paint the whole rest of the, the truck body. So I absolutely can't live with that. So the other thing I want to show you is this deep rust pitting that's occurred on the metal. So you see some there. And you see a whole bunch here. And the fact you're seeing that right now um, is not a good thing because I got this silver POR15 specifically to try to fill that in to make that look better. And it really didn't work at all like it was supposed to 
And just to give you a little bit of an idea of what the frame looked like beforehand, since I'm doing this video after everything's done, it would have looked basically like this. This was actually the other frame that I was considering using for this project. And you can see those pits, and they definitely don't go away once you sandblast it. They're very much visible after blasting. And so once I set out to find the best coating, I learned all sorts of stuff. So I'll share that with you here. The first thing that came to my mind was powder coating. Why don't I powder coat the frame? It sounds like, that just seems like the most common thing people would go to naturally. You know, if I want the best coating, I'm gonna powder coat it. I don't have to deal with, uh, you know, paint prep and having the right coating system and application all that. I just take it to a shop and magically I have a powder coated part. So I did get a quote on that and a couple things to share with you. It was gonna be 500 bucks. Uh, the sandblasting was 200 bucks. I'll throw that out there. And if you follow me on Instagram, you saw the frame um, beforehand. It was very clean and I had most of the brackets taken off of it. So there wasn't a whole lot to work with there. If I took them a full frame with nothing disassembled, I would expect closer to 300 bucks for that. But they wanted 500 to do the powder coating. And so I was looking at the frame and all those brackets that basically the cross members that tie the two frame rails together are riveted or bolted on. And everywhere you have basically a seam with two parts just being bolted together, if you don't get your powder to fuse all the way around that seam, you know, essentially welding that seam together with the plastic powder coating, water's going to get in there the plastic's not going to get down in there because those, you know, the powder's so big and it's not liquid, it's not going to fall in there. So I ruled out powder coating. Powder coating is great if you have one part that you can access all sides of. But once it comes to a frame, unless you're going to split that frame down 100% into each individual component, it's not worth doing it because you're going to have rust coming out of all those seams and it's going to look disgusting and you're not going to get the protection that you're trying to get by powder coating it. So it'd be a huge waste of 500 bucks. And even if it starts rusting out of the seams, what are you going to do? You're going to pour paint in there, right? You're going to pour a urethane or something in there and that's not necessarily going to properly adhere to that powder coating. Uh, the other thing was Let's say I did split it all the way down um, to each individual bracket and frame rail because uh, I thought about it and when it comes to gravel roads it'll still sandblast through that powder coating and once you get those chips in the, the powder coating how do you touch it up because they don't have a great system that I'm aware of for doing spot touch-ups to powder coating and I've gotten a lot of individual brackets, uh, automotive parts throughout the years that had different systems of powder coat applied. And some of them I was able to spray paint over and it stuck just well. And other ones I sprayed spray paint over it and the spray paint bubbled up and there was a reaction there and it was not pretty. So I didn't want to risk blowing $500 on that and the time to completely disassemble the frame. So powder coating, went out the window, um, the next natural thought is, you know what, what's, what's explosion proof Linex? And I have the front of my car trailer sprayed in Linex, and um, when I used to work as a design engineer for a trailer manufacturer, we did all the fronts of our trailers, we had our own Linex machine, and 10 years later I still have that trailer, I use it all the time, um, that Linex doesn't show any signs of being constantly blasted with gravel while I'm driving down gravel roads with it. So for that, for that aspect, it's great.
for the impact resistance to gravel, it'll absolutely withstand that abuse. So I was fishing here about a month ago and saw a frame on a boat trailer uh, for backing the boat down into the water. And obviously, you know, the frame goes underwater twice a day, every day for, you know, probably half the year. And so how, how long does a frame last? And so I've seen aluminum frames, I've seen hot dip galvanized frames, and in this case, it was a Linex frame, and uh, it was a boxed frame, and it had holes in it. Um, and so when it comes to Linex, there's a couple things. Um, one, the taping is incredibly time consuming and expensive. And two, uh, anywhere that you have a hole, or a threaded boss, whatever, um, you got to tape that off. And so now you have an exposed area of bare metal where Linex isn't going to be covering the, the metal. And so on this boat frame, everywhere it had a drain hole, they actually taped off those holes. And I got down on the ground and crawled up next to that frame and you can see rust just pouring out of all those holes. And on this square body Chevy frame, there's like five million holes. And even though I welded most of them up and got rid of them, all the holes that are left, they would still have to tape off. So uh, be really time consuming, really, really expensive. I, it'd probably be over a thousand bucks by the time they taped off all those holes. And so not worth it. And uh, Linex is usually applied an eighth of an inch thick, but as fast as that material comes out of that application gun, you can get a quarter inch of material on there pretty easy. But my point is, anywhere I'd be bolting a bracket back on, like let's say I'm bolting a spring hanger back on, I have an eighth inch of material now between the frame and the bracket, I just move my leaf spring out. So my leaf spring mounts on my axle aren't going to line up right with my my leaf springs and that's why I put all my scab plates on the inside of the the frame rail because I didn't want to interfere with my leaf spring mounts bolting back onto the frame so that's a pretty big negative aspect is the thickness that it adds and then lastly and I've seen this on several different uh, pickups with Linex applied to them. Linex is just a rubberized coating and it doesn't necessarily stick really well to metal or to paint. It sticks really well to itself. And so it's kind of like powder coating in that regard. Um, moisture can absolutely get between the metal of the frame and the, the Linex. And it sits between the Linex and the frame and it rusts out and so that's actually happening to my Toyota right now I got moisture in between there you can poke a hole through the Linex and water comes out and so it's like it's a great impact resistance coating but you have to have something that's absolutely going to permanently stick to your metal frame and not allow water to get between that layer and the metal and so that's really how I, I started looking at POR 15 and I thought about linexing over the POR 15 but then for all those other reasons I just went over I threw that out the window so I watched a whole bunch of YouTube videos and read until I was almost blind and kind of wanted to make this YouTube video just for uh, that reason because some of these other videos I watched were so incredibly helpful and influential on the route that I decided to go with this. I decided to go to just a wet paint coating on the bare steel and I found three main options and one is just your basic epoxy primer which is said to be one of the best best things you can use. Um, the next was a self-etching primer. And I found out that a self-etching primer is acid-based. It can only be used on bare steel. It can't be used over most uh, paints, pre-existing paints. 
and in some cases that acid will actually interact with the underlying paint and it'll bubble and it'll lift. And I didn't know that until this project. An epoxy primer can be used on basically anything. It's like the universal glue. and It'll stick to anything and anything will stick to it. So I read up some uh, technical papers where they tested epoxy primer versus self-etching primer and they had them basically in a salt blast and the epoxy primer actually held up better, which is somewhat irrelevant because you should have a top coat over the primer. Uh, the primer shouldn't be your top coat. So, um, would you would you just prime something and then run it? No. But what I wanted to see is if the top coat failed, which primer would hold up better? Because my plan is, if I see damage, I'm going to address it. But let's say I'm in the the middle of the winter or something, and it's not the ideal condition to go and touch it up. I want to know. I want to know that the primer that's underneath my top coat that's now exposed is going to hold up to the road conditions until I can get in there and fix it. And so I don't want to go with a primer that's going to lift off and then let the contamination just rest against the frame and start rusting it out and create a bigger problem. So definitely a fan of the proxy primer now and probably won't use a whole lot of self-etching primer anymore because of that. The nice thing about the self-etching primer is it comes in a can and it's super uh, quick and easy to apply whereas this is a two-part system you have your primer and your catalyst and you got to mix it up and put it in a gun and spray it but if you're going through the trouble of painting something you might as well do it the right way instead of half-assing it so lastly uh, I started to look at POR 15 and um, it's basically kind of off in its own little world and it's, it's, there's a lot of contradictions with it. And I still don't know how I feel about it, but this truck, this frame, is going to be the test. And I'm going to update you guys as time progresses and let you know if it, if it holds up or not. So, POR15 is basically a pre-primer. It goes on bare metal and you can prime over it and top coat over it. And so it's not really just a primer, it's, it's supposed to be this layer that actually chemically bonds to the, uh, the bare metal and does not allow moisture to get underneath it and sit between the POR15 and the metal. Whereas they say primer, um, it will actually let water work its way through it and get underneath it and sit against the metal. Alright, so with the POR15, I bit the bullet. I went for it. I watched a YouTube video. The guy did a two-year test. He tried like five different types of uh, rust preventative spray paints and um, the POR15 did the worst out of all of them. And so why I even tried this after watching that video um, well, part of it was there was a lot of discrepancies in there with how he applied the system versus uh, the instructions. He didn't follow the instructions in like three different spots. And so I made sure I followed the system to a T so they cannot argue with me. If this system fails, there's nothing I did that goes against the sheet. I did everything that they said. So if this system fails, then this product's junk and I will never use it again. It's, and if it works, then I will use it because it's a complex system. But you think with the more complex a system it is, it would be uh, thought out better and a little more robust than something like a spray can that, boom, you put it on and that's it. So with the POR15, I've used it in the past and totally just didn't do it correctly. The first time it just came with one quick little sheet and there's a couple notes on it and it wasn't very uh, in-depth. It wasn't in a very good technical instruction sheet. And so I actually did uh, an SEM rust mort, rust converter, <clears throat> and then I did uh, an SEM self-etching primer and 
then I did the POR15. I found out POR15 is supposed to go directly on metal. It's not made to go over a primer or a top coat. So um, they say that you don't get the, the benefit of that impenetrable barrier unless it's directly on metal. So, uh, and another time I did it over a uh, manufacturer, the Toyota, the, the tan color that came on one of my trucks. I sprayed it over that after I scuffed it and it's held up really well, but um, I wanted to do this by the book. So this POR15 system is very expensive. It's over $100 a gallon. I paid over $50 for a quart. And they have a degreaser, which is pretty cheap. It's, it's like less than $20 for a gallon. And then they have what they call metal prep or metal ready. And that's actually the cheapest phosphoric acid that I've found uh, pre-mixed on the market. And so one thing you'll notice is they change the names of their products all the time, which drives me nuts because you're trying to find uh, technical data sheets on stuff and they, they're changing the name. So it was metal ready and now it's metal prep. And so SEM rust mort is one version. There's Eastwood fast etch. There's the 415 metal prep. And I looked all the, the safety data sheets up to see what the chemical composition is. And it's really just phosphoric acid and zinc phosphate. And so there's really no reason I see that you couldn't just go out and buy these chemicals in bulk in their concentrated forms and make this solution yourself and save an absolute load of money because the, the SEM rust mort is just way, way overpriced um, phosphoric acid. Ridiculously overpriced. And so the, the difference in their formulas is basically the strength. The Eastwood Fast Etch is just a really watered down version. So it's not going to sit there and attack the metal. Um, but I used the metal prep because I wanted to follow everything to a T on this project. And so when it came to the color, um, they have a bunch of different colors. And they're basically just different colors other than the silver. The silver has a bunch of aluminum in it, and you can't you can't shake the POR15 paint. You have to stir it. And there was a glob in a quart can. There was a glob about the size of two golf balls of that aluminum filler, and it took me probably 10 minutes of stirring to get that to finally mix in. But they say that the silver aluminum filler will fill in all those pitted rusted out areas and as you can see on the frame it absolutely did not work and so that was the main reason I went with silver. One more major discrepancy worth noting is the film thickness that they recommend for the paint and what they claim their paint can do. So for these rust pits the silver paint with the aluminum filler in it is supposed to fill these in. Well those are pretty deep. So if we're only putting two mils of uh, paint on here, it's not going to fill those in. That's obvious. So they are basically advertising it like they want you to just pour that stuff on nice and thick and let it fill in like a high build primer. Well, they say very specifically only apply two very thin coats. But then they go and they say if you have drip rails or a a windshield channel that have rust just go ahead and pour some POR 15 in there I'm never gonna pour paint in anything because it's gonna be way too thick and it's not fully gonna cure it's not properly gonna cure in the center it's gonna stay kind of spongy and um, it there's just too many contradictions there so I think the the silver POR 15 filling in imperfections I think is a huge marketing gimmick it totally contradicts everything they say about application film thickness. And as you can see here, it didn't work. I want to touch on colors really quick. So this whole project is a military truck and I want to keep everything a military color. I was going to use the cart paint 
um, since I've done other projects and just sprayed the cart and that's an amazing coating system it's super um, resilient to most things but there's a huge health hazard when it comes to welding in the presence of cart paint and so rather than painting this truck with cart and then damaging the truck and having to weld and worry about having to remove all the cart on both sides um, before I weld I figured you know what I'm just gonna match the colors but I'm gonna go with your your standard urethane paint because this is an off-road I'm gonna be doing uh, a lot of rock crawling and overlanding in this truck and I fully expect I'll be beating it up on the trail and having to do welding repairs so the last thing I want to worry about is dying uh, because I welded in the presence of cart and I inhaled something toxic and it killed me so uh, traditional color on this frame is going to be just the flat black cart and so I wanted a flat black color on the frame and the POR 15 doesn't come in flat black the best they could do is semi gloss and so I thought you know what I'm gonna go with the silver to try to fill in some of these rust pits the other thing I thought might be cool is if I have flat black on top of silver and I start getting rock chips uh, I should see these silver freckles poking through my paint and that should alert me that I need to repair my paint system on this frame because um, if I don't it's gonna rust whereas if I have black on top of black and that top coat's taken a beating I'm not gonna know it because it's not gonna look any different unless I you know it's just you're not gonna be able to see it I thought that would be a good idea in hindsight the silver bled through the black so bad that I, I really wish I would have just used the semi gloss black so when it comes to uh, getting your your project ready to apply POR 15 they give you a couple different options they say you can sandblast it blow the dust off and immediately apply POR 15 so with my frame I actually worked on it for over a week after I had it sandblasted um, like I said I wanted to be able to weld on it easier so that's why I had it sandblasted and so I wasn't going to paint it right away and 12 hours after I had it sandblasted there were major spots of surface rust already appearing or flash rust and it was actually coming out of the areas of the frame that were heavily pitted where rust was occurring to the point you know it's going all the way through so I don't think the sandblasting really removed all the rust I think it took it off the surface but there was rust still happening down in the pores of the metal that you weren't going to physically remove and so chemically neutralizing it seemed like the only feasible option other than just basically cutting part of the frame out and replacing it which I would have had a third of my frame left if we did that so the first thing you do is you apply this cleaner degreaser from POR 15 I got these ZEP spray bottles and uh, there's I've tried a lot of different bottles in my professional career and a lot of them don't hold up to chemicals for extended periods of time they might last you a day or a week and then they quit spraying uh, because the chemicals will break the bottle down um, I've had this metal prep this phosphoric acid in this bottle for over a week and it's working great so uh, these are like two dollars uh, you can't really go wrong there so with this degreaser you mix it um, between a 4 to 1 and a 10 to 1 ratio with water so I poured in 5 ounces of the degreaser and then I got hot tap water and put 20 ounces of that in here and uh, had a full bottle shake it up and you know I'm working on a, a freshly sandblasted frame relatively you know I, I welded on it for a week so basically um, there was some oil that came out of my air sander that got on the frame at one point and then my loading straps have some sludge on them from moving uh, projects around so some some real light stuff 
but and then the the soot around the the spot weld that I put on this actually you can see it just pull all that soot off those those weld zones and it just pulled it right off and then you wash this off real thoroughly with a garden hose and then you dry it my process was I sandblasted the frame did my welding took a flat disc 80 grit and flattened out my weld and relative to the sandblasted material the flat disc left a real like glass smooth surface and so I wasn't happy with that and I tried different grits I took a, uh, an air powered flat disc to it like 36 grit and I still wasn't happy with it so I actually took my own sandblaster and just spot blasted all the areas where I had used a flat disc and that abraded the surface really well and then washed it down with this um, I had it on that flat bed truck that you saw at the beginning of the video so I used a leaf blower uh, I tried using just an air chuck on an air hose a leaf blower is so much more volume uh, it blew all the dust off the frame before I started blew it all off the, the truck and then use this and then I used a leaf blower to dry the frame because you have to completely dry it and you want to dry it you don't want water sitting on uh, fresh metal so the leaf blower oh, just loved it super glad I have it and then you come in with this metal prep which is phosphoric acid and zinc phosphate and you soak the they say for sandblasted metal you spray this on and you want to keep it wet with this chemical for 10 to 15 minutes so that the the acid can neutralize any rust and then it leaves it behind a zinc phosphate coating well I'm not a chemist and I don't have a lot of experience with zinc phosphate so I don't know what the zinc phosphate really looks like when it's left behind but you use a garden hose to wash this off as well and so if you see in my pictures uh, and I have these on Instagram too if you're interested and looking at them closer but you start out with a silver sandblasted frame you degrease it hose it down it looks a little bit duller gray after that but not much then you hit it with this and then you wash it and uh, dry it and once you get it dry it's gold so it doesn't really look like surface rust but it's kind of that gold slightly brownish orange color so I'm not sure if that is the zinc phosphate that's left behind or if that's surface rust but if you read the POR 15 paint instructions it says well yeah you're washing it off with water it's gonna surf it's gonna spot rust or flash rust and that's fine because the the POR 15 will adhere to that well I really don't know how I feel about it if it's the zinc phosphate that I'm seeing then yay you know you have um, a lot of high zinc primers zinc plus steel equals you know thumbs up it's a good relationship for longevity but if you look at some of the other manufacturers out there that are selling their own blends of phosphoric acid uh, one example is Eastwood with their fast etch they say spray it on work it in with a Brillo pad and leave it basically you wipe off the the excess and you leave it and so if you're body working a panel or you had something blasted and you want to you want shelf life out of it so you can work on it and finish it you spray it with a fast edge and then you walk away from it whereas POR 15 says spray this on and wash it off don't leave it on um, because it'll sit there and attack the metal so how do you have two totally different um, philosophies on how to use this? It, there should be a scientific answer. It shouldn't be, you know, what they think. So I, I don't like that. I don't like when you have the same product from two different people and they can't agree on what it's going to do to your, your project or your material. So, but 
without rambling on much more, um, I washed it off and I dried it off. It, it looked different, but it looked um, like it definitely took care of those really heavily pitted, rusted areas. And so I'm confident and optimistic that this got down into those pores and neutralized that. So we're not going to have rust working its way back out from the inside out. What I'd like to see a test of is take two pieces that are freshly sandblasted and do the POR15 on one and then use this system on the other so it gets that yellow coating on there and then do the POR15 and see which one works better because I could go either way. Doing this, you know, it took me about an hour and a half to get it on and get it dried off to the point it was dry enough to spray the paint. So it's not like it's a ton of extra work and it's $50 for these two jugs. And you know, you're looking at probably 60 bucks by the time you get the spray bottle. So not a, a whole lot of extra cost. And I use one bottle of degreaser. So, you know, I use that much chemical. And then I used uh, about a bottle and this much. I filled this bottle to the top and then I used this much. So not even a bottle and a half. So I got plenty left of both. So I, I didn't even use $25 worth of product. So I just like to know what works best. So I will keep you guys updated on how this system performs anyway. So once we had the frame totally dried off, we're ready to spray on the POR15 and they asked for two super thin coats and I called in the tech support and he said you want it to be just a hair more than a dust coat that's how thin it should be and so I went to spray the first coat on and nothing wanted to come out of the gun so I had to thin the thin the paint up to five percent and their email tech support told me I could use xylene and um, their written instructions say only to use uh, POR15 thinner um, or certain types of lacquer thinner could work. And so why they don't mention xylene in any of their written instructions, I don't know. But I had a, I had a can of this on the shelf. so. Um, that's way cheaper than going out and buying their special thinner if it's just a rebranded can of xylene. So once I thinned it, it sprayed amazing. And I got complete coverage on that whole frame. I got two coats out of one quart and I still have plenty left in there um, to go out, do touch ups where I had the jack stands. So uh, basically, I put the frame on jack stands and I put the jack stands where the body mounts are going to sit because those, those areas won't be exposed to sunlight or anything else and so just POR15 underneath those body mounts should uh, be enough to protect the steel in those areas. So I saved enough to go brush that on once I flipped the frame over and um, so let's talk about um, application and some of the discrepancies so there's three different instruction sheets I've seen and they contradict each other so one of them says do not recoat you know you're going to do a two coat system and they say don't put your second coat on when it's tacky wait until it's smooth to the touch then you look at the other two sheets and they say we want you to apply the second coat when it's still the first coat still tacky if you wait until the second coat's dry, you got to scuff it. So there's a discrepancy note number one. Um, then they talk about UV resistance. So they say POR15 should not be left exposed to direct sunlight. And in one case it says it'll only cause com cosmetic blemishes, but it won't affect strength. So if you can stand having the paint fade a little bit then don't worry about top coating it but if you want it to look good you better just top coat it with a urethane now i found a scientific uh, lab test results um, document 
and it says in there that they they did a salt spray on it and once the the coating was broken down by UV rays it lost its strength so there's another contradiction I would take that I would play that on the on the safe side and just top coat it and assume that if it's in the sunlight it's going to break down and it's going to fail so then they started talking about top coating it and they used to have a can of primer called tie coat and it says it's the the best um, intermediate coat between your 415 and your top coat well then they changed the name of it to high build primer and totally just tried to wash their hands of this tie coat idea and so another discrepancy there was in the technical data sheet it says you can't recoat the tie coat until 24 hours has passed but then on the can there's like three bullet points and the third bullet point says can be top coated after 30 minutes so 30 minutes 24 hours huge discrepancy there I stayed the hell away from that tie coat high build primer because they don't even know what their own instructions are on that I decided I'm going to use an epoxy primer it's like glue it'll stick to anything and anything will stick to it so it would be the best answer to put in between the PR15 and then my top coat so a few more discrepancies with the, the PR15 they call it PR15 poor 15 poor sounds like you know it's a poor porous they say it's non porous they say it will form an impenetrable barrier and yet it seemed to absolutely just soak up the next coat of paint um, that I put on top of it so I'm not I'm not really buying that it's non porous um, and it's POR 15 which supposedly stands for paint over rust but yet you look at their instructions and it says remove all rust that you can't uh, they say that a sandblasted surface is best well sandblasted is far from painting over rust they also say well you can let that blasted surface flash rust because that flash rust actually gives it the best surface to stick to well, I'm trying to prevent rust I don't want flash rust I'd rather paint over freshly blasted steel so huge discrepancy there do you want a freshly blasted surface or do you want rust so I don't know if there's they're trying to I don't know if this is the best system for a sandblasted surface or if this system was designed for lazy people that want a quick and easy fix to paint over their crappy old rusty frame and they just want to get under the truck and spray something on there and make it not look all rusty I don't really know what it is I don't think they really know what it is but we'll find out we'll find out in a year or two from now we'll, we'll see how the system's holding up so when it came time to uh, to spray everything it took about two and a half hours for the first coat of the 415 to get tacky sprayed the next coat that one only took about an hour and a half it was a lot uh, thinner coat and then came time to do the epoxy primer and so I have this DTM epoxy primer from Summit Racing and I've stored it according to their conditions in a climate controlled room in the dark and it, I put it on the shaker and there's all this like beeswax looking stuff coming out of it and the top popped off and it was down to about this level so hopped on their website and it used to say used to say a date range I think it said you could store it for up to like three years in the right conditions if you never opened it and now that information is not on there can't find it so um, that was obviously not true 
the other part of it was this can came in beats are all holy hell and I should have returned it so lesson learned there if there's any dents in the can just return it this was a hundred dollars between the two and this is all dented and it wasn't leaking but when I went to pull it off the shelf there's a huge puddle of this underneath it and about that much is gone and so it's all junk so I was freaking out I was planning on putting two coats of this on because this is kind of a high build primer it's pretty thick stuff so I called POR 15 and he said, what are you trying to do? Are you trying to body work it after the POR-15 and smooth everything out with a, you know, are you going to do an epoxy and then a urethane primer and sand it and get it all perfectly smooth? I said, no, I just want the, I want the color to be right. I want the flat black color and I want to make sure it sticks. So I wanted to use a primer and I like the idea of having, you know, two extra coats of paint on there. And he said, well, the instructions say to dust coat a layer of primer onto the POR-15 when the POR-15 is still tacky. And then let your primer dry and then proceed according to the directions of your primer and your top coat. He said, well, if you're not going through all the body working and you're just top coating immediately, you don't even have to use a primer. Just go to the top coat. So that's what I did. I went to my top coat and... Uh, so I got two coats out of my POR-15 one-quart can and had great coverage and had a little bit left over. And then I had this can of Summit Racing flat black urethane single stage and didn't even get one full coat on that frame. And that silver is just bleeding through like mad. And so there's not really much I can do. I sprayed this on a Friday afternoon on a holiday weekend, so it would be Thursday of the following week till I got more paint. So there's one thing to consider. If you have a local paint store, um, absolutely give them your business. I wish I would have done that because then I could have went and got more paint. This has an 18 hour recoat window, and so. Um, I could have, you know, even the next day gone in and gotten, you know, probably a gallon as much as that's bleeding through. And I wanted to do three coats for two and a half, do two full coats and then a third coat in the high traffic or high uh, gravel abrasion area spots. And I wasn't able to even get one full coat out of this. so. I'd plan on at least two quarts of your top coat color. But I think a lot of that is also the fact I was planning on my primer basically sealing that POR-15. And then it would have also dulled the color. So it would have given the black better coverage. And so I'm not happy with that at all. Another nice thing about the epoxy is you get a four, on this epoxy you get a four day recoat window. So I can spray this on Friday and walk away from it and come back Monday if I want to and basically blow it off, wipe it down and hit it again. I don't got to sand it. I don't have to abrade it. And then with this, this top coat, single stage urethane, 18 hour window for recoat. So you can spray it and let it start to cure come back the next day you know like when I was spraying this it was starting to get dark so I could come back the next day pull it out in the sunlight and check for any spots that didn't get full coverage and hit them again so that's a positive there so to summarize um, basically we followed the instructions on this thing to a T um, even though I wasn't able to use the epoxy primer uh, PUR15 said they wouldn't use it anyway for my project. They would go straight to the single stage top coat. So that's what I did. Everything that's um, exposed on the outsides of the frame rails to the sunlight, I made sure I got a full two coats of this on there. I skimped on the, the inner upper portions of the C-channel frame rail. So sunlight's not going to get there. You're not going to have 
mud or uh, water sitting on that upper inner channel. So um, as far as having a full coat over top of the POR-15, we got that accomplished in all the areas where it matters. And so we'll see. We'll keep you guys updated. And uh, once I get this thing on the road, we should know pretty quick if it's going to hold up to the gravel abuse or not. So thanks for watching.